Welcome back to Round Tire Restoration, everybody. My name's Chris. Restoring a 1964 Triumph TR4, and I am the owner of a 1966 Triumph Spitfire. Tried to uh, get the Spitfire running and underway for uh, the inaugural season drive, and she is not agreeing with me. So if you remember, I started her up uh, sometime in March or so. Link to the video uh, in one side here. But uh, ran pretty strong and just fine and no problems at all. And I started up this time and just really sluggish, heavy, heavy, heavy hesitation slash stuttering, whatever that symptom would be. So I'm uh, thinking ignition, but, but who knows? So I'll, I'll take you through kind of what I tried to do uh, to try and troubleshoot this. And as of me recording this right now, I do not have it fixed. I have an electronic ignition module on the way. That's my last, uh, my last ditch effort here. And if that doesn't do it, then I'm uh, going to have to get much more extensive than I already am. So thanks for watching. We'll see how it goes. Let's get it sorted. It is a beautiful day in southern New England. Probably the first nice weekend we've had since uh, since the weather has started to turn. And unfortunately, that's about as far as I got. So let's see if we can't figure out what's going on. All right, so I first started her up a couple months ago, March, I think, and ran fine, ran good, started right up, ran strong. And now what's happening is it'll start, it'll run, but as soon as I put any load on it whatsoever, it bogs right down and starts spitting out through the carburetors. So uh, probably gonna be an ignition slash electrical slash valve clearance problem. I have not adjusted the valve clearances since I put the car together, so that's, that's probably a bad idea. But then again, I didn't really do anything to the car since April, haven't even moved it or whatever I started it last. So we're going to uh, do valve clearances. Yesterday I was here, tried to take it out, I pulled the plugs, looked at them. Uh, number two was a little bit wet, but the rest of them looked good. I had spark at all, at, all, uh, at all four of them, but when I pulled the plug wires for number three and number four, nothing happened. The engine didn't, didn't change characteristics at all. If I did check the fuel floats, that looks good. I put my hand in front of the carb. That uh, about sucked my hand into the motor, so that was good. So I'm not too sure what's going on, but we'll see if we can figure it out. So first thing up we're gonna do is valve clearances. So with valve clearances, one that the workshop manual tells you to specifies that you need to be done cold. So the motor is definitely cold. What you do is obviously you've got eight valves here on a four cylinder motor and you can do something what's called the rule of nines. So you have one through eight, the two valves that you're dealing with have got to add up to nine. So if you're going to deal with valve four, you've got to deal with valve five to be able to adjust. So you just start at the front and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I wanted to adjust one valve, you put the valve that it's, you, you pick one valve that's at the very complete bottom of its stroke. In other words, that the valve is completely open and you can just look at that by rocking the engine. And then the corresponding valve that causes that to add up to nine, that's the one that you can adjust. So here looking at it right now, and then you can't see it real well, I'll come around and zoom in when I get to it. It looks like number eight is pretty close to being completely compressed and fully down. So that tells me that I can come over here to number one and adjust the clearance on number one. So I got to get, uh, it's a little hard to turn the motor over. You got to get a, uh, you can't really get a socket in there because the radiator's in the way, but I've got a uh, big old adjustable wrench that I'll do with it. So all I'm going to do is roll the adjustable wrench roll the motor a little bit and look for this number eight here to be fully compressed and find its essential rock point and then i'll go over and adjust number one all right so the motor check the number eight number eight's fully compressed there and i'll just check the valve clearance and that's uh that's pretty good on number one it's ten thousandths is the clearance and that's uh, a nice little drag there so i think that one's good so now we'll just you want to keep a running tally of you know which valves you check so i got a little sheet of paper just with the numbers one through eight on it i'll just slash off number one now and you just rotate the motor so it doesn't matter you don't have to do them in order whichever valve picks up next and starts to go starts to dive down i'll just 
wait until that bottoms out and then I'll go find its brother at the number nine position and then go and line that up. Doesn't matter which way you turn the motor, though you'd want to turn it the same way each time just so you don't waste your time. All right, so now I'm at number three is at its low point. So three plus six is eight, or excuse me, nine. Can't add, maybe that's why the car don't run. So now I'll just go find number six and adjust it. All right, so that's number six. That checks out. So I've been cycled through. I know I didn't show you to them all. It's kind of boring, but I've cycled through them all and I don't have a problem with valve clearances. So that's, it's not that, unfortunately. So now I've got my timing light here and we'll, uh, we'll get the car running, I think, and get the timing light hooked up and see what that tells me. All right, so we got our timing light hooked up. This is a, uh, a Harbor Freight one. I've showed you this before, I think, when I was messing with the car a while ago. So you set it up to four cylinder and all that stuff. I've already painted the, uh, the pulley and all that kind of good stuff so I know what's going on here. And uh, we're just gonna see what the initial timing is. Now I I'd set static timing and I haven't messed with anything. So I'm not, I don't know what's going on, but. how bad it's running. Then I got a fan running just to try to minimize the, uh, the grief with the exhaust fumes. So, see what happens here. Well, looking at that timing, the timing's right on. Obviously it didn't run very well, but number one cylinder right at top dead center, right on the mark. I think I might be stumped. All right, so here it is idling, relatively fine. As soon as I put a little bit of gas to it, it really starts to, you can hear it, hear that tapping. It's like tapping through the, spitting and, ah. I don't know. It almost seems like it's a timing thing, but the timing checks out. I don't think it's fuel delivery. So when I was in high school, I had a 76 MG midget that I bought for 300 bucks. Thing didn't run and uh, didn't know why. Had a, uh, had a Weber carver on it. It was a halfway decent car. You know, the thing uh, when I bought it was probably only about 10 years old. So I got it ho towed home and everything like that. I had been taking auto mechanics courses at the time, so I was relatively familiar with how a car worked and everything. And uh, it had Piranha ignition. And the way the Piranha ignitions worked, and I'm sure they still work, I think they still sell them is it had that slotted disc in it with four slots and a little photo sensor cell and a mirror, a little laser or whatever that reflected light off the mirror when the little slot would come in front of the, in front of the mirror, it'd see itself and it'd fire. Well, some dust or debris or whatever had collected on that mirror, blew that thing off, put it back together, thing started right up and drove it for the uh, rest of my high school year. So here, I came over today, did static timing real quick. I, I kind of regret doing it. Started the car up, ran just fine. Gunned well, revved well, let it warm for a little bit, it was doing good. I even got so far as to get the doors open here and getting ready to get the car lined up to get it pulled out. And uh, as I'm, I'm getting the doors open, I hear a subtle change in the motor and I come back over and uh, same symptoms as it was before, bogging down and not running. Disconnected the fuel line coming into the first carburetor, turned the motor over, pumping fuel like nobody's business, no problems there. So went through this last year as I, as I documented right before the car show and I'm again kind of getting right before the car show here and uh, replaced essentially the entire ignition system as for, except for the plug wires and the spark plugs. Everything else was practically new including the coil which is what I think it ultimately was. But anyway, something obviously is going wrong right, right now. It's not the same symptoms as it was before. The thing wouldn't stay running at all before so I've got some problems. So I'm, what I'm going to do is swap out the plugs Start it here real quick and make sure I'm still experiencing it so that I try to, you know, not troubleshoot stuff that's not broke. And I've got a new set of plugs there. I'm going to swap them out real quick and see if that doesn't help me out.
See that? Thing starts right up. Loves it. Loves to start right up. Let's see what happens. All right, see? See that? That started out right. And now it's now it's gunked up again. Hmm. That's interesting. And now you can tell that it's running like crap. Now, let's try the plugs. I doubt it, but we'll see. So this little knob right here is the advance, and that's a mechanical advance when you set the static timing. But when the car is running, as the vacuum builds, you can see that move in and out as the whole distributor pivots, either with the centrifugal weights or the vacuum. So kind of looking at that a little bit, and it seems to me to be sluggish. Now, I don't have enough experience to know that it is or it is not. I'm going to start the car here real quick. I'll show you that. But it seems like when that thing, I would think that, especially the centrifugal weights, as the car speeds up, it should be a nice smooth transition from where it is right now to further in. It'll move in. You'll see it. But it doesn't seem to be that way. It seems to kind of get hung up. And why it's getting hung up, at least in my eyes, is when the motor's not running real well. So I don't know how bad the motor will, want, will run if there's no advance right from the get-go. But maybe this is, uh, maybe I've got some issues inside the distributor. So I'll start it up, I'll show you real quick, and, and uh, we'll go. All right, seems, seems, seems to be pretty nice and smooth now. The motor's running all right. Right there, it should have kept going in and it didn't seem to be. The problem is, is that I don't know what's more effective, the mechanical weights or the or the uh, vacuum. So maybe it's you know, it's not moving because the vacuum's not working. I don't know. So I'm going to maybe take the top of the distributor part and look in there. I'm, I'm kind of grasping at straws here. Got the top of the distributor off here, and uh, the centrifugal springs are in there. This one here and one here. And this one is very loose, where the other one is tight on the two, um, two posts that it's on. So I'm not sure if that's enough to cause the problems that I'm having or not. I, like I said, I don't have a whole lot of experience here. The, the weights are, are free to rotate, but I'm not sure if that spring, you, you would think the spring would tend to not let it throw out as much. So I would think if it's loose, you'd have more weight and, and it would advance it a little bit more if anything. But uh, definitely no smoking guns in here. So I'm gonna put the distributor back together and uh, see if I can't get it back to where it was. I got to reset static timing, obviously, and all that. But uh, I, who knows? I don't know if that's enough or not. Another thing that MG Midget would do to me is I would take it apart. Something would break. I'd take it apart. Wouldn't find anything wrong. Put it back together, and it would work. So I just took that distributor all apart. Didn't really clean anything. Didn't really do anything. Put it back together. It seems to be running OK. So I'm going to try to get it out of here real quick and just stay on the property. I'm not going to go anywhere. Uh, I, do, I just don't trust it and I don't feel like getting stranded. It's already uh, too little too late to have to deal with getting a tow. So if, uh, at least if I get stuck on the property, I'll just throw the car cover on it and won't have a problem. But, so I'm going to take a little ride real quick. We'll see what happens. Well, it ran. It got me uh, around the property a couple times, but something's still not right. The, uh, you know, I'm half tempted to just say screw it and buy a whole new distributor with a little electronic ignition module but uh, just doesn't feel like that should be it unless that spring has got more impact than i think but just doesn't seem like it should but anyway i'm going to uh, i'm going to park it here and uh, stew on a little bit ask my favorite form see if i can't figure something else out